Hello everyone, now let us discuss about anatomy of respiratory system and in the current session we will be discussing about nose. First of all, coming to respiratory system, the respiratory system is composed of nose, pharynx or throat, larynx or voice box, trachea or windpipe, bronchi and lungs. In the current session, we will be discussing about nose. So, here is the overall pictorial representation of respiratory system. This is the nasal cavity and this is the nose and these are nasal conchi. This is larynx and this is trachea. This is right lung and this is left lung. And these are bronchioles and this is alveoli. The respiratory system parts can be classified according to their structure or function. And structurally, the respiratory system consists of two parts, upper respiratory system and lower respiratory system. The upper respiratory system includes nose, nasal cavity, pharynx and associated structures. Whereas the lower respiratory system includes the larynx, trachea, bronchi and lungs. And functionally, the respiratory system consists of two parts. It is composed into conducting zone and respiratory zone. The conducting zone consists of a series of interconnecting cavities and tubes both outside and within the lungs. These include the nose, nasal cavity, pharynx, larynx, trachea, bronchi, bronchioles and terminal bronchioles. Their function the major function of the conducting zone is to filter, warm and moisten the air and conduct it into the lungs. The next is respiratory zone. The respiratory zone consists of tubes and tissues within the lungs where gas exchange occurs. These include the respiratory bronchioles, alveolar ducts, alveolar sacs and alveoli. And they are the main sites of gas exchange between the air and the blood. The branch of medicine that deals with the diagnosis and treatment of diseases of ears, nose and throat is called otorhinolaryngology. Oto means ear, rhino means nose, laryngo means voice box. Logi, L -O -G -I means study of. And the pulmonologist is a specialist in the diagnosis and treatment of diseases of lungs. Now coming to the functions of the respiratory system. It provides the gas exchange that is intake of oxygen for the delivery to body cells and removal of carbon dioxide produced by body cells. It helps regulate the blood pH and the respiratory system contains receptors for sense of smell, filters the inspired air, produces vocal sound that is phonation and excretes small amount of water and heat. These are the various functions of respiratory system. Now here you can see this is the nose and inside this internal nose is nasal cavity. This part is pharynx and this is the larynx, this is trachea and this is the right primary bronchus. These are the right lung and the left lung respectively. Now coming to nose, the nose is a specialized organ at the entrance of the respiratory system that is divided into external portion and an internal portion which is called as nasal cavity. The external nose is the portion of the nose that is visible on the face and consists of a supporting framework of bone and hyaline cartilage covered with muscle and skin and lined by a mucous membrane. The frontal bone, nasal bones and maxillae form the bony framework of the external nose. The frontal bone, nasal bones and the maxillae, they form the bony framework of the external nose. And the cartilagian, cartilaginous framework of the external nose consists of septal nasal cartilage which forms the anterior portion of the nasal septum. The lateral nasal cartilages inferior to nasal bones and the alar cartilage which forms a portion of the walls of the nostrils. Because it consists of pliable hyaline cartilage, the cartilaginous framework of the external nose is somewhat flexible. And on the undersurface of the external nose are two openings 
called as external nerves or nostrils. Here you can see this is the nasal cavity and these are the ethmoid sinus and maxillary sinus. This is frontal sinus. This is a eustachian tube opening. This part is considered as completely pharynx. It is divided into nasopharynx, oropharynx and laryngopharynx and this is larynx. And these are the inferior turbinates, middle terminal and superior turbinates. The interior structures of the external nose has three functions. Warming, moistening and filtering the incoming air, detecting olfactory stimuli and modifying the speech vibrations as they pass through the large hollow resonating chambers. Resonance is nothing but prolonging or amplifying or modifying the sound by vibration. Coming to nasal cavity, the nasal cavity is a large space in the anterior aspect of the skull that lies inferior to the nasal bone and superior to the oral cavity. Nasal cavity is lined with muscle and mucous membrane. Anteriorly, the nasal cavity merges with the external nose and posteriorly it communicates with pharynx through two openings called as internal nerves or conchae. The nasal cavity communicates with the pharynx through two openings called as conchae. The ducts from the parasinal sinuses, paranasal, the ducts from the paranasal sinuses which drain mucus and the nasolacrimal ducts which drain the tears also open into the nasal cavity. The ducts of paranasal sinuses and the nasolacrimal ducts, they open into the nasal cavity. The paranasal sinuses are cavities in certain cranial and facial bone lined with mucous membrane that are continuous with the lining of the nasal cavity. And skull bones containing the paranasal sinuses are the frontal, spinoid, ethmoid and maxillae. Besides producing mucus, the paranasal sinuses serve as resonating chambers for sound as we speak or sing. This is an important point. Besides producing the mucus, the paranasal sinuses they serve as resonating chambers for sound as we speak or sing. The lateral walls of the internal nose are formed by ethmoid, maxillae, lacrimal, palatine and inferior nasal conchae bones. The ethymoid bone also forms the roof and the palatine bones and palatine processes of the maxillae which together constitute the palate form the roof sorry form the floor of the internal nose. Ethymoid bone forms the roof of the internal nose. Important point ethymoid bone forms the roof of the internal nose Whereas, heart palate, which is composed by palatine bones and palatine processes, forms the floor of the internal nose. The bony and the cartilaginous framework of the nose help to keep the vestibule and nasal cavity patent, that is open or unobstructed. And the nasal cavity is divided into a larger inferior respiratory region and a smaller superior uh, olfactory region. Superior region of the nasal cavity is the olfactory region. It is a little bit smaller. That's the inferior region of the nasal cavity it is larger and it is the respiratory region. The respiratory region is lined with pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium with numerous goblet cells which is frequently called the respiratory epithelium. And the anterior portion of the nasal cavity just inside the nostrils is called as nasal vestibule. It is surrounded by cartilage. The superior part of the nasal cavity is surrounded by bone. And the vertical partition, the nasal septum, divides nasal cavity into right and left sides. 
the vertical partition and nasal septum divides the nasal cavity into right and left sides. The anterior portion of the nasal septum consists primarily of hyaline cartilage and the remainder is formed by vomer perpendicular plate of the ethmoid, maxillae and palatine bones. Now, when air enters the nostrils, it passes first through the vestibule, which is lined by skin containing coarse hairs that filter out large dust particles. Three shelves formed by the projections of superior, middle and inferior nasal conchae, they extend out of each lateral wall of the nasal cavity. The conche almost reaching the nasal septum subdivide each side of the nasal cavity into series of groove like passages. The, na the conche almost reaching the nasal septum they divide each side of the nasal cavity into series of groove like passageways the superior middle and inferior meatuses. Singular means meatus. meatus. The mucous membrane lines the nasal cavity and its shelves. The arrangement of conchae and meatuses increases the surface area in the internal nose and prevents dehydration by trapping water droplets during exhalation. As inhaled air wills along the conchae and meatuses, it is warmed by blood in the capillaries. That is why the inhaled air is warm. Mucus secreted by the goblet cells moistens the air and traps the dust particles. And drainage from the nasolacrimal ducts also help moisten the air and it is sometimes assisted by secretions from the paranasal sinuses. And the cilium Cilia moves the mucus and trap dust particles towards the pharynx at which point they can be swallowed or split out, thus removing the particles from the respiratory tract. And the olfactory receptors, supporting cells and basal cells, they make up the olfactory epithelium. And these cells, they contain cilia but not goblet cells. By this we complete the anatomy of nose. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for further videos on medical coding and CPC training.